Earlier this year, Etsy hosted its third NFV plug test. The difference this time around was that it was co-located with the OPNFV Fraser plug fest. Pierre, good to see you on Telecom TV again. Great to be here. Now, you were heavily involved in these plug tests. Um, that was about four or five months ago. Um, time for results to have been scrutinized and analyzed. What, what was the outcome of this? It was really good, actually. The, the, there's two parts to it. The, the Etsy plug test itself, which is uh, it's an interoperability event. So the way it works is we divide the system architecture into three major components. The platform, so NFVI plus VIM, typically OpenStack based, but a few VMware based uh, platforms as well, and multiple hardware. Uh, the Mano stack, which is a little bit of a deviation from the standard, but it's the orchestrator and VNFM. And then VNFs themselves. And we couple them together and have just interoperability tests. This year, we focused on uh, multi-vendor network services. So not just one VNF, but multiple VNFs strung together, and then that would become an interoperability test with the Mano and the platform as well. Why is that important? Why is it important you do that? It's, th that's the whole point of the system, is to be able to plug and play multiple VNFs, mu into one, string them together into one service, so they have to be able to talk to each other. And talk to each other is on two levels. Uh, one that we care about at the plug test, meaning can they interact with the system and the architecture? And the second one is as applications, can they talk to each other? Ultimately that gets tested as well, but it's not the goal of the test. So a firewall talking to other devices, et cetera. That's the application level and we consider that to be a little bit out of scope. But uh, everything else gets tested. Can they scale? Can they, well, can they onboard you know, the basics and stuff like that? But, we're, what we've proven now is we're way beyond that. We, we've proven that onboarding, instantiation, termination, everybody gets it and, and it works. Uh, now we're getting into the fun stuff, so scaling. And, and there's multiple ways to scale. Can they support those multiple ways? All sorts of tests. And we focused a little bit on what's, what we call EPA, Enhanced Platform Awareness, so placement possibilities for the entire network service, et cetera. And we also did multi-cloud, which is uh, you know, two different platforms talking to each other. What we've discovered is uh, progress is on the way, it, it, and, and way better than I expected, to tell you the truth. So it, it, more advanced features are supported by a lot of the components. Uh, the, the, the basics are now forgotten. <laughs> we're done with it, and we're advancing. We're, we're marching forward. We still discovered that some of the very, very advanced features like uh, automatic scaling, well, it's still a little bit of work to do there. Uh, but that's coming up as well. Uh, the, uh, the one thing that I should point out is it's, it's an interoperability test, but without taking a look at how they interoperate. We're not looking at a spec level yet. The next one will. So that's the first one. So that's the pure Etsy part of the plug test. Uh, progress is being made, industry is moving forward, thumbs up. It's fun to watch. Uh, the other exciting part is the second week of the plug test was co-located with OPNFV. Now this, that's the first time that's happened. And we've been working towards that for quite a while, so I was pretty excited about it. And that gave us a chance to really try collaboration ideas and try to do, okay, how can we do things together? How can we help each other out? Uh, and there's multiple things that came out of that. So we, we have, at Etsy Test, we have a bunch of what we call work items, projects essentially, that we, we started talking, and it was with OPNFV, see the, the difference is we, we're, we're a little bit theoretical at, at Etsy and FV, while as they implement and automate. They're the experts. So using that, we're trying to iteratively develop our stuff, our work items, with their help because they implement and feedback and then it's a circle. So we basically form an agile team, in a sense, together with the open source community and to develop better products at the end of the day. And so that, that was perfect, actually. I loved it. I guess one of the issues that's come out of this, or one of, one of the developments, is a new benchmarking initiative, is that right? And that, and that guy, is a, it's a work item called TST009. It was just published about a month ago. And the, it's the shining example of the collaboration I just outlined. It, it, it was fantastic. Because OPNV themselves discovered, and a lot of people, we researched a lot of public testing that has been going on, and that getting repeatable, dependable results was difficult on these platforms, and we're trying to figure out why. 
And what we discovered is that it's, it's a consequence of having a shared platform. Because you know, if you had a, a physical network function, it's dedicated to one thing. And, and it's very good at doing that, but now we're, at, we're running multiple things on a shared platform. And not just the application, but the OS, the operating system itself, the virtualization, just that, you're sharing it with a lot of things, and that was causing issues. So basically, we, we'd run uh, benchmarking tests over the platform, and we'd get results that were far less than, than what we expected. And, and so our guys, and this was, uh, the project lead here was Al Morton from AT&T, and he's a benchmarking guru. So they stepped back and they said, well, hold on here. The way RFC 2544, which is the standard in benchmarking, is you do a binary search and you, and you try to find out, okay, can I do this level of performance? Okay, up it, up it, up it. And when you, when you hit a level where you get one last packet, you're done, that's the max. Well, what he figured out is like, well, it isn't the max. It could still go faster. And it's these little hiccups caused by the fact that it's a shared platform that was causing these packet drops. It's not excusable, but the point is now using a different type of binary search called was loss verification is that you don't excuse the packet loss, but you don't stop testing because of it. Because what you're trying to, what we're trying to do now is figure out the difference between what we call resource exhaustion, where, all right, you're done, you're, that's the fastest, and uh, these little platform hiccups. And, and the reason we want to separate them is that you deal with them in separate ways. And uh, it's become, it, it, it's basically a modernization of RFC 2544, which has been the standard for about 20 years. And we came up with this new spec that really allows people to find out what the true performance limits of the platform are, uh, which goes totally towards cost of ownership, right? So th this is really important stuff to know, sizing, dimensioning, and all that. And then separating that from these hiccups or transient processes that you can deal with separately and optimize in a separate way. So it's a really, really, uh, I think, a really big deal, <laughs> if I can say so myself. As you continue doing this work on, on, on these, these tests and benchmarks for VNFs, um, will we also start hearing, especially this year, about the move to cloud native network functions. How, do, how does this impact the, the, the work you're doing? At the end of the day, we look at, if a VNF is cloud native or not, uh, we don't care that much because we look at it as a black box. Having said that, uh, cloud native impacts performance. And, and everything I've heard and I've, I've seen in presentations here at, at, and everywhere is that certain functions are appropriate to be implemented in a cloud native way while the other, others not so much. Meaning, if, if it's a very data plane intensive application and then you, you disaggregate it so much that you introduce a whole lot more communications, you're actually going to slow that application down. And, and people are having a lot of trouble bringing the performance up. So th at the end of the day, they're saying, mm, maybe for a router or some sort of switching device and all that, cloud native is a little less appropriate, full cloud native, than say more control plane applications, co content delivery applications, et cetera, where it totally makes sense to disaggregate everything, make, make them all stateless, and then you can upgrade each and every little microservice uh, by itself. So it, it, cloud native makes a lot of sense, by the way. Let me step back and say, say that. It, it's absolutely necessary, it's the way forward but some applications are less apt to be helped by it than others, and it's mainly data plane applications. We will take a look at that, and as far as our testing is concerned, it's a black box, how does it perform, how you implemented it inside, not so much. Final question, um, what issues do we still need to focus on before the master ranks of telcos and CSPs go, great, we're happy with everything, it's all happening as we want it? <sighs> Uh, you'll get a thousand different <laughs> answers for that. To me, it's interoperability, which makes it portable. Okay, so the, the pie in the sky is the, the Lego block philosophy. I have a platform. I can pick and choose the elements running on top of the platform, the Mano stack, and I can pick and choose different ones depending on if data center versus edge versus, you know, so there's going to be a lot of different technologies, but I need to be able to deploy in each type of, of, of platform, each type of cloud, uniformly and, and in a portable way. 
So uh, we're actually addressing that as well in, in test by uh, our, our newest work item and the big one is uh, conformance testing of all the MANO APIs that we, that Etsy has, Etsy and FV has specified. We're now putting together an automated test plan to go all through that to help the industry evaluate themselves and say, hmm, yeah, we're interoperable, we're conformant, and once that's established, you have a way better possibility of doing that LEGO block philosophy. Great, well Pierre, thanks very much for the update. Anytime. Thank you.